World Wide Web. I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality of the best hair. And the was way back in 2018, but even that year, another Halloween movie came out, and just last year, we got Halloween Kills in 2021. The follow-up to Halloween 2018, which itself is a follow-up to Halloween 1978, completely ignoring all the movies that took place in between. Unless it's to establish something that would definitely mean that the previous films could not even be entertained as canon. But to be fair, pretty much every movie in the Halloween franchise ignores Halloween 3. But what is Halloween Kills? Well, after Halloween 2018, get this, Michael Myers was not killed, and in fact, he returns to Haddonfield once again on Halloween, and he... Kills! Like, most of the town. Anyway, let's take a look at Halloween Kills so I can finally be caught up on Halloween again. Until Halloween ends, the final chapter for real this time. The movie opens up. Around where the last one left off, give or take a bit. We see that drunken, cheating, asshole boyfriend character from the last movie. Cameron, played by Dylan Arnold, now having that post-douchebag regret. But he can't seem to get Oscar to pick up the phone when it's Allison he's trying to contact anyway. If you know where she is or if you guys are together, let me know. All right, be safe. Bye. But lest we forget last movie, Oscar got a little too touchy-feely for his own good, and in this genre, that is more than enough for impalement. Dude, you okay? Oh yeah, sure, Haddonfield PD is known for taking their power naps in the middle of the road. Realizing the officer might be oversleeping his break time, Cameron rushes over and discovers it's Officer Hawkins, played by Will Patton, and surprise, surprise, he's still alive! He needs to die. <laughs> okay, okay, come on, come on. Stay still, stay still, stay still. Look at me, look, look at me. Who needs to die? Wasn't exactly the help I was offering, but if it was the cards I've been dealt, fuck it, I'll be your surprise hit, man. To explain who needs to die, we suddenly jump back to 1978. Remember Halloween? Great movie. Had a lot of these same guys running around Haddonfield that time too, like Michael Myers. And rookie Officer Hawkins, played by Thomas Mann. Surprised by the slasher villain's teleportation powers, the rest of the police managed to catch up. Loomis said he shot him multiple times in the chest. To be specific, he said, I shot him six times! This would be Hawkins' partner, Pete McCabe, played by Jim Cummings. The officers split into pairs to cover more ground to begin searching for the shape. While this is going on, though, Halloween is still in full swing, and we see a group of young assholes bullying a helpless Lonnie Lam, played by Tristan Eggerling. At least up until the police show up, like the most badass hall monitors in all of Haddonfield, and warn them about a weird guy on the loose. Go home to your parents and lock your doors. Why? What, what did, did he do? do? He murdered three teenagers down the street. Well, and the stalking, trespassing, theft, all of those things were also illegal. Ooh, and we mustn't forget driving without insurance. On his way home, however, you can tell that the killer is close to Lonnie, because he trips over nothing! Indeed, he is right there. But fortunately, Batman's away as soon as the police arrive. You, you didn't see him? Take a deep breath. Who? The Boogeyman. And boy, does that boogeyman know how to boogie, man! So he must run! This little event happened just outside the Myers residence, and we can't have little kids getting in the way of the police investigation now. You know how this is. Places abandoned, spare the remains of a dead dog Michael has been eating! Yay. Well, the place seems clear. Except for those weird noises coming from upstairs! No bother, Pete can walk into Michael's sister's room, all alone, and start waxing poetic about the implications of slasher movies set in small-town America. Haddonfield. Where nothing exciting ever happened. Oh! Jesus, Michael, you're supposed to slowly walk up to your victim after spending most of the movie standing around looking at him. So Pete is in trouble! Both from the super-strong slasher villain and the fact that the only person there to help him is Rookie Hawkins. And the effectiveness of guns in this movie is 50-50. Yeah, half the time, Michael doesn't even care he gets shot. The other half, people don't even know how to use guns properly. So, if we're getting a top 10 Michael Myers kills video, this won't be on it, considering Hawkins killed Pete. Michael was, at best, an accomplice, but as he easily escapes Hawkins by slowly walking away, Michael slowly walks right into the entire Haddonfield police force, along with Dr. Loomis, played by Tom Jones Jr. and voiced by Colin Mahan. What happened in here? Tell me what happened. The 
Michael kill? Did Michael kill again? Did Michael kill six times? Hawkins doesn't answer just yet. We've got to jump back over to 2018, Halloween night at Mix Bar. We are introduced to Dr. Vanessa, dressed up as Sexy Nurse, played by Camilla McNeil, and Nurse Marcus, dressed as Dr. Love, played by Michael Smallwood. They have their own problems, but those take a back seat to the loud and obnoxious party they are seated next to. Ah, oh, well, he can just buy a drink from the bartender, Brian, played by Brian Mays. Hey, look here, don't be bored by the motherfucker over there, man. They are friends with that crazy lady that almost got killed by Mike Myers. No shit. Hmm, not a bad deal if surviving a psychopath's killing spree gives you a free pass to just be a douchebag for the rest of your life. Said group of drunken assholes just so happens to be the main topic of the next open mic performance, conveniently enough. As an all-grown-up Tommy Doyle takes the stage, played by Anthony Michael Hall. He's here to just tell everyone, hey, remember 40 years ago, Michael Myers really fucked up this town, but I survived. Along with Lindsay Wallace, still played by her original actress, Kyle Richard Tumansky, Marion Chambers, again played by her original actress, Nancy Stephens, and finally Lonnie, not played by the original actor, but Robert Longstreet. But to be fair, Tommy ain't played by Brian Andrews here, so we're split down the middle on role reprisals. Tommy's like, yeah, the boogeyman's real, and he is coming to kill us. But screw it, we can handle that. This is for you, Lori. Wherever you are. Oh, thanks. It looks like she could use one. But oh yeah, she left Michael to die in that burning building. How can he survive that? I'll just leave that to the fire department, of course. They rush to the scene to save as many lives as they can. Michael has survived this long because all this time, he was hiding just out of frame. There's someone else down here! <laughs> Kicking off Michael Myers' slaughter of the entire Haddonfield Fire Department! As with most of Michael's kills in this movie, this isn't exactly over and done with all nice and clean. I'm gonna have to edit around a lot of this to keep the community guidelines in mind because DAMN! It's just stab, swing, skewer, suspend, and saw with this man! So they're dead, but you know who isn't? Laurie Strode, still played by Jamie Lee Curtis. She's made it to the ER where OG Sheriff Brackett, Charles Cyphers, overhears the ordeal. But there's more going on. Karen, played by Judy Greer, keeps waltzing into the morgue looking for her dead husband, and Allison, played by Andy Matichak, must be consoled. Dad's gone. He'll always be with us. Even if we can't see him. Oh great, now I'm just imagining the ghost of Ray floating around for all eternity with ectoplasmic peanut butter all over his penis. But you know who isn't dead? Michael Myers, and he's doing what he does best. Being Haddonfield's number one door-to-door -door murder salesman. Attacking a random old couple. Phil, played by Lenny Clark, and Sandra, played by Diva Taylor. One of these slasher kills that again isn't a quick and clean over and done with Popcorn Party, but a gruesome, painful, slow ordeal. Where if you have any sense of empathy, might be a bit hard to watch. Been a while since the last movie. Just uh, gotta work a few kinks out of the old technique. While this is going on, Lonnie gets a call from his son, Cameron. Hearing that he needs a ride because he kind of sort of tripped over an officer who was bleeding to death, followed up with a breaking news story that, hey, a bunch of people around Haddonfield have been carved up like Christmas turkeys or Thanksgiving ham. But, well, fuck it, Michael Myers is on the loose. So you should probably lock your doors or something. Marcus and Vanessa decide to just say fuck it and leave. Shit, I forgot my stethoscope. Oh Jesus, could you find something more pointless to worry about while trying to evade a slasher villain? <sighs> oh shit, I forgot my NFTs. Thus, Marcus heads back for the doohickey while Vanessa is tasked with starting the car for them. The car. With someone else in the back seat. Fleeing for her life, she calls for aid. He's in the back, he's in the back seat. Michael Myers is in the back seat, go look. Go look, go look. hell no! And we can be certain this is Michael Myers after we just watched him slaughter an entire fire team and a couple of miscellaneous victims. And here we just uh, never actually see him in the back of the car. And it's not gonna stop this building full of drunken, fearful assholes from jumping to that conclusion, though. I love this today. But evil dies tonight. Yes, evil certainly dies tonight. They, they, they remind us by repeating this phrase over and over about 30 times throughout the movie. Tommy effectively leads this angry mob, attacking the car, which drives off and crashes. But when they close in on Michael, he's nowhere to be found. 
because it was actually the other escaped mental patient, Tivioli, played by Ross Bacon. It's, it's very easy to confuse your towering, white mask, slow-plotting slasher villain for the uh, short and pudgy bald guy over there. More important than any of them is the old Myers house. It's not abandoned anymore, no. It's home to a couple. Little John, played by Michael McDonald, and Big John, played by Scott MacArthur. It's not like they don't realize whose house it was either, as when a small group of asshole kids play a prank on them as a means to steal all the Halloween candy, Big John tells them the scary true story about this house of Michael Myers, where he slaughtered his sister in the upstairs bedroom. And when the wind blows just right, you can still hear her calling. Michael. Get out of my yard! <laughs> yeah, well, it's scary, I guess, but it just doesn't do it for me without at least 12 gallons of blood. On that note, back in the ER, Laurie is still in intensive care, as is Hawkins, but never mind that, Allison and Karen are brought aside for a little chat with the police. Karen blames Laurie for Michael's killing spree, but Allison points out that Michael's new doctor in the last movie is the one who set up all this killing, but hey, it's all good. Michael's dead. No more problem. Ex except for one thing. Michael Myers is alive. What?! Oh, come on, don't act all surprised. How are you so sure he was dead? Did you see the body? Moving right along, hey, Cameron shows up, says sorry once, and I guess that's good enough. Their breakup is officially over, and they are working together. Allison and Cameron join Tommy Doyle in hunting down Michael Myers once and for all. Karen is like, go after what? Laurie's here, Michael's gonna come here. You wanna face Michael? Just stay here, surrounded by police. I'm not gonna pretend this didn't happen. I love Dad. And somebody loves whoever is laying under those sheets right now. And the body count rises. But Karen's not having it. You sit next to your dying grandmother and stop thinking about ways you can help. Do you have security guards? It seems like you should have security guards in case something like this happens. And this is happening right now. It's not just coincidence, is it, that Karen happens to be a total Karen for this movie? However, while she speaks with the manager, Allison secretly provides Laurie with an emergency knife before leaving for the manhunt of Michael Myers. They arm up and spread out, recruiting everyone they can find for the angry mob while getting everyone else to return home. Like this group of children with handy dandy silver shamrock Halloween masks. Lindsay is like, hey, there's a bad guy on the loose, you should probably go home. And they're like, who cares, it's Halloween, we got candy. Just waiting for a friend and trying to avoid this creepy stalker in a white mask who just so happens to be standing right over there. Where did you see him? He's just hiding behind trees. And he pops out like peekaboo. I mean, we're not three years old. Come on, man. Oh, look, there he is. Oh, hello. Hey, kid, like the video. You better subscribe by the time you get home. <laughs> Mask. Honestly, compared to what those masks did to the kids in Halloween 3, Michael did a mercy killing. So he must run, but Michael is right there at the car! Everyone panics, firing wildly! Michael grabs Marion by the hair, but she breaks away and takes aim. This is for Dr. Loomis. <sighs> oh, sorry, Loomis already shot him six times and those guns just don't hold anymore. So Michael stabs her to death before killing Marcus as well. But wait! Vanessa ran 50 feet away so she could close in firing at the man! Okay, so there's another one that's disqualified from the top 10 Michael Myers kills. Oh, well, well, well I guess he did kick the car door, but, but she pulled the trigger. After Michael slaughtered everyone else, Lindsay comes in rushing, attacking him with bricks. Bricks. Uh huh, in a pillowcase. Like he gives a shit, choking her until she fiddles with his mask and he has to stop for a moment to fix it. This is when her kill the boogeyman strategy suddenly shifts over to running for her life, which she somehow does manage to do, slipping away from the slasher killer. Oh well, Karen can tell Laurie, yeah, Michael's dead, dude, good. Now get some sleep while Allison is still on that mission to kill Michael Myers. Lonnie is driving them and talking about the good old days with Allison's dad. Adventuring, canoeing, doing peyote. Your daddy got freaked out by his own reflection. He took off his pants and he jumped in. <laughs> 
I stopped doing drugs with him. Ah, so I guess Ray just never stopped. Their group happens onto Lindsay's car, with Tommy there to tell them, hey, blood everywhere, no bodies. Well, unless, of course, you count the one set up on the playground, that is. And Lindsay, who went from briskly jogging away from Michael to crawling in absolute pain, barely alive, having escaped the killer. So they bring her down to the ER and, hey, look at that, plenty of people here to recruit into that angry mob. The boogeyman is at large. He's got no choice but to emerge. He is an apex predator. <laughs> Great, now I'm imagining Godzilla making a beeline for Haddonfield. But they can stop him if they work together and disembowel the sumbitch. Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! All right, everybody, calm down. Evil can die tomorrow morning or next week. Evil doesn't have to die tonight. But the police haven't worked, so that's what angry mobs are for. Tommy rushing in to tell Laurie, it's fine, he's gonna protect her from Michael, which surprises her as her daughter told her he was already dead. So she will fight. Spare that big cut in her abdomen. I uh, can't do much about that. So, new plan. Let him come for me. No. Let him take my head as I take his. She's not gonna rush in to meet him head on. She's gonna bide her time and wait. Wait until he's nice and close completely sawed off her cranium. And then she strikes. But Michael hasn't made it to the hospital just yet. Instead, we jump back over to Johnson & Johnson. There's a knock at the back door. Like, of the house. But when they go to check, the knock changes to the front. No one there either. But when little John returns to the back door... Someone's in our house. And it's not a child. Oh damn. I'm gonna have to bump up the scary stories to at least PG-13 then. Or gives a spooky silent scene of sneakily stalking about scared of the slasher killer who stabs Big John's side before gouging his eyeballs out as gruesomely as possible. It had to be super gory, as that was all he got, really. Little John finds him, but his death at the hands of Michael Myers is a considerably cleaner off-screen demise. Back at the ER, however, they have spotted Michael Myers. Probably. That fat, short, bald guy must be the Haddonfield Horror, the babysitter butcher, the killer prick! They can chase him down, and then we can take a little break from this bit for a nice, calm chat between Laurie and Hawkins. Hawkins blames all this on himself. You see, Loomis was just about to shoot Michael that night. I could have made all this go away. Oh, sure, because the seventh one, seventh one, that'll definitely do it. Anyway, back with the angry mob, Tivioli is hiding, scared for his life. But don't worry, Karen is there to realize, hey, he's not the bad guy. Don't worry, just lock yourself in this little hallway and I'll have a little chat with the angry mob. But they care not for chit-chat. No, they want blood. They are coming for him anyway. Until, in his attempt to escape, he leaps out the window to his death. <laughs> Darn it, it wasn't Michael Myers. In their thirst for revenge, Haddonfield turned into the same monster they were trying to destroy. Except that it was the entire town against one person, not, not the other way around. So, yeah, I got the wrong guy. Now the angry mob doesn't know what the hell to do. Not to worry, Lonnie's on the case. He figures, based on the fatalities so far, Michael Myers is heading right the fuck back to the Myers house. No detours in sight. So that's where they head. But, 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 he's not gonna actually put his son and their girlfriend in danger, no. He's gonna go in alone and just hope it all works out. Cameron, let's go. Oh, what's the prep? Oh, right, sorry. I'm in Texas. Random gunshots here and there really don't seem all that out of the ordinary to me. So Cameron and Allison head in to take on the killer! Mainly by shooting first and asking questions later. There's the shot. The question is, who in the hell puts a real jack-o'-lantern in a broom closet? Splitting up, as you do, Cameron discovers his dad is dead! Stuffed into the attic trap door! And he will be soon as Michael stabs him! Before Allison stabs Michael! Only to be tossed down the stairs, messing up her leg. Means she can't do much as Michael beats the crap out of Cameron! Her cries to lure the killer her way only works so well, considering it doesn't take much for him to get some extra kills along the way. No! 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 <laughs> I guess the lesson here is if you cheat on your girl, you can't just go back to her. It really doesn't work out in the end. 
Thus, it's Michael and Allison. Clearly, Myers has the upper hand. That is, until Karen comes out of nowhere with a pitchfork, stabbing the man and then stepping on the head like, uh, once. Good enough to knock him out and take the mask. This is a means to lure the killer to where the rest of the angry mob is waiting, whom surround Michael and attack! Oh, come on, that was only five times. Do you really expect that to work? Well, they think they won, but surprise, Michael jumps back into action, murdering the fuck out of each and every last one of them. Sheriff Brackett, Tommy Doyle, and even returning to the house to take out Karen, whose phone is soon called by Lori. The breathing she can hear on the other side is the closest thing we have to a scene between the two all movie. I'm coming for you, Michael. In our next installment, Halloween Ends. At least according to the extended cut, the original theatrical release's ending was even more anticlimactic. But anyway, that was Halloween Kills. And as long as what you're interested in is the latter, it's not that bad. In terms of plot progression, storytelling, and shocking revelations, yeah, this really doesn't have all that much to talk about. It's another one of those movies that leans more into deconstruction, with the angle that Laurie simply isn't all that important. And yeah, I do agree that having the same final girl for 40 years is something I find a bit puzzling in a lot of long-running horror franchises. The problem here is that the deconstruction isn't used to build up something new. We just lose what we had and gain uh, nothing. To this end, Laurie's role in this movie is next to non-existent. Jamie Lee Curtis is in plenty of scenes, has plenty of lines, and gives a good performance, but if the movie opened up with her bleeding to death before reaching the hospital, none of the following scenes would have needed to be altered all that much to accommodate that. A lot of the storytelling is pretty jumbled, though. Also, the movie assumes you've watched the 1978 and 2018 Halloween films, and it's not just nods and references. The plot feels even more bare-bones without information that you only get from watching those two movies. Even then, though, the way Cameron's douchebaggery is just kind of hand-waved away unceremoniously, it feels like his character makes less sense if you have seen Halloween 2018. So when it comes to the plot, it's quite a bare-bones affair. Michael survived, and he goes home. Lots of people die along the way. Humans were the real Michael Myers all along, uh, that kind of stuff. But where the movie excels is the kills, specifically. Usually, you have to find some classic grindhouse cinema for the more extreme gorehound tastes out there, but Halloween Kills goes all out with its death, dismemberment, vivisection, impaling. Plenty of things I really can't show for fear of community guidelines coming down on me. Just trust me, it ain't for the squeamish. That, combined with the good acting and sharp presentation, it makes up for a lot. And while the storytelling isn't good, it's not offensively bad either. It just leaves the movie as an empty vessel to deliver a string of some of the most impressive Michael Myers kills ever put to film. Coming in at three not goods whose lives have ended in this evening. Out of five. But now that they've killed, like, uh everybody. If they want to bring in any more classic Halloween characters for cameo appearances here and there, it's gonna have to be from movies that are technically not canon in this timeline. But when have soft reboots ever avoided that? Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, don't store your jack-o'-lanterns in the broom closet. They will not last until next Halloween, trust me. Brandedinspiration.com